What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to the butthole. This is the great Brandino. It's um, a book. He just rage. That's Scott. Hi, I'm Scott. If Love you guys that. are watching on our video, um, this picture here was taken. Oh man, when was this taken, Scott? A couple years ago. I think really recently. Well, it's in my new house, so two years ago. Just um, winter time is cold in Minnesota, so this is just a way to try and keep his face warm. That is true. It smells a little bit, when especially when you're bald. You got to have something on when it's cold outside. Yeah. Um, a little smelly, a okay. little moist, but you know, whatever, it works. So, we have a huge announcement to make for our podcast listeners, and it's our honor to make it on Butthole Podcast episode number thirty-seven. Butthole number thirty-seven. It's episode number damn near eighty by now, but we have made officially made a move over to the Publishers Desk Network, and that was now that's now where uh, who we're partnered with for distributing our podcast on Art Nineteen. And uh, it's who we are going to be getting sponsors through and stuff. So if you start hearing ads in our show, it's because of that move. We're all super excited about it. And uh, it's a big move for us and what we're trying to build for our podcast. And uh, we're super excited. So if you hear ads, please listen to them. It helps pay the bills. Keep a rough, keep that hat on my head. All right. We are going to now bring in Gage because Gage has himself a butthole beef. Gage, explain yourself. Yes. So our Twitter account was hacked by ourselves for accidentally <laughs> our birthday as our original date of conception. <coughs> and we have gone through a hell of an appeal process to try and get that account back. We've uh, finally booted up a backup account. And it's good to have a backup account. But when we have gear with our fucking brand name on it, official butthole, we need that username active. And uh, I checked the Gmail account today and apparently Twitter thinks Scott's account or Scott, Scott's ID is fucking fake or something. Cause they said it wasn't sufficient enough information to get our account back. So I don't know what the fuck we have to do. Butthole beef with Twitter is official. I am full on uh boycott twitter mode it's bullshit this is a butthole boycott fuck twitter i like that the issue with twitter is there's nothing you can fucking do it's not a matter of you can call them and be like hey guys my account got locked up um i made a mistake can we figure this out it's there's no no phone number that you can reach uh, well, they do have one, but you can't get a hold of them. If you have any questions, they redirect you to their website. Um, and they're a fucking appeal process. There's nobody to talk to. It's if you submit an appeal, we'll get back to you. When we get back to you, if we get back to you, fuck them. Fuck Jack. I mean, he's such a dick. And I also want to say a couple things related to that ID picture. First of all, it's a beautiful ID. It's one of the most beautiful IDs you could ever see. It's a picture of me. And second of all, the fucking quality was pretty good. I can read everything I had to read on it. <laughs> Maybe they had a glare off your head and they couldn't quite see the picture. Well, that's their problem. They should be wearing sunglasses in the house too. In all fairness, I did submit mine a couple of times as well. So they should have at least had fucking two of them. Oh, fuck. Maybe they think it's some... Meh. Maybe they do think it's not legit or something if we had two ID but submissions. You, you resubmitted yours though. Even after yeah. they said that it didn't work and they haven't gotten back to us. It's been like four weeks. Dude, they will, probably won't get back to us another four weeks because they're a bunch of assholes. Boycott oh. Twitter. Butthole boycott of Twitter. Jack, you're a fucking dick. And Twitter, you're a bunch of fucking assholes. We have quality content out on the streets that says at official butthole. And you're blocking those people from what they deserve. Fuck you, Twitter. On record, you're a bunch of dicks. Go fuck yourselves, especially you, Jack. You own the fucking company. Make it right. Yeah, and fuck Coke, too, because they're the ones who started all this bullshit. And fuck Dasani, fake-ass water. Yeah. We're never going to stop spreading the truth. No, we are truth You can't seekers. censor us. Horrible Coke. Dasani is horrible Coke. It's gross um, Coke, that. Gross Free Coke. Rebranding. Um, so, no, I have a question for you guys before we... Before we get going, sorry, this is off topic, and I should have did it in a different podcast. But here I am. Do you guys believe in 
when you say something, you're putting the words into the universe and it's more likely to happen. Kind of like For a sure. karma situation. Speaking it into existence. Exactly. Yep, I do. Uh, I was having a conversation uh, over Mother's Day. Um, saw a video. Snake kind of swimming across the water. Guy grabs it. They're partying. Um, you know, they have rafts and shit. He goes, he swings it and throws it onto the, the floaty raft, like the, uh, what are they, the lily pads that <laughs> their friends were on and freaked him out. I mean, if I was on that lily pad, I would have been in the water just as fast as everybody else. Well, I was showing my, my uncle Luap, um, who's deathly afraid of snakes and he, he doesn't like him. He won't even watch the video. So he was turning away, but then we were talking about the spiders we have at our house. Like how big they get. I mean, the spiders we get can get up to four inches in size. I haven't seen one that big, but I've seen one like two and a half and they're gnarly. Well, last night we get home for Mother's Day, come downstairs and we have a pile of dog blankets and sure as shit, one of those big ass spiders sitting on the dog blanket and man, I fucking hate those things. <laughs> I've always been cool with spiders for some reason. I don't know why snakes also freak me the fuck out. So I watched Indiana Jones as a kid, and he's so brave <laughs> and masculine, but he's afraid of snakes, so I thought that's okay for me to be afraid of snakes, too. Spiders <laughs> I've cohabitated with, and as long as they're not, like, on me, I won't kill them. I'll just let them be. Let them live. Star yeah, Rebo, but if you playing with Daddy Longlegs on the playground? Yeah, Daddy Longlegs are fun. Fuck you. Legs off, that's me. <laughs> Spiders suck, even to long legs. Fuck them all. I don't mind. I don't mind spiders, and I'm not a. I don't mind these things, except when I'm grabbing my laundry and one scurries out of the blankets. I'm not a fan of that. If I see them outside or on the road, they don't bother me. I'm not. I'm not nervous about that. But they like ha- like areas that aren't used that often, and I'm not down in my butthole as much as I am up on the you know the couch upstairs. So sitting here, it makes me think like. Is there going to be one that fucking, like, crawls up over my shoulder? They bite, nah. too. These Dude, fuckers bite, about- like, like bees. Yeah, I've, li- I've been in that kitchen for two years now, and I've never seen a single spider in my kitchen. You don't have to be concerned about that. No, I'm talking my butthole. Down in the butthole. But you're in Scott's kitchen. Oh. <laughs> eh. it's, a- <laughs> it's a visual thing, guys. It's a visual thing. What? That's not real? You're kidding me. Come here. Brandon's like, fuck, I totally fucking... Oh, Jesus. You can pick your friends, you can pick your nose. But you can't pick your friend's vagina mask. Vagina, mask, vagina saved mask saved lives. It was Matt's. Mm-hmm. He, got, he got it for a fucking Halloween party. <laughs> that was a fun party, too. It was that was for, at your place, wasn't it? Yeah, it was at Gage's. Adrian yeah, Pinch right. there? Yeah, I brought my stick. (laughs) My switch. All right. Anyways, uh, that's my spider story. Not a fan. So, this episode, believe it or not, was actually supposed to be the NFL episode. Uh, We tend to get a little sidetracked, but it was good conversation, so it was worth having. Um, but it was brought to my attention today from Brandon that. The Washington Post came out and had a really – was it in an article, Brandon, that they posted this, or was it a whole article itself? Some uncredited asshole wrote something about it. So it was an article. Okay, so it was an article that had in the, in the description, the pandemic has reminded us we don't need more sports in our lives. We need less. That was from, let me repeat, the Washington Post – Guys, what do you think of that comment right there? I think dumb. it's proven the exact opposite to me. Sports unites people. It gives people an uh, escape from this stupid ass reality that we're living in. Even people are watching video game race cars on Sunday for reason because it helps them ease the pain of not being able to watch real NASCAR. Like, we need sports. Sports needs us. We're coming back together. We're going to bang. That's what we do. That's what we do. 
I, my counter argument here is when uh, when we have the Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Phil Mickelson, uh, Tiger Woods golf outing in like two weekends here. I think it's going to be one of the highest pay-per-view fucking events ever. I mean, this is going to crush because there's an absence of sport. And people just love that competitiveness on any form. So I couldn't disagree more. It sounds like it was written by someone who didn't like sports to begin with. <laughs> They're probably like, yeah, I get to hang out with my significant other more often now. This is awesome. <laughs> Other person is going, God, I wish the fucking masters were on right now. I don't have to talk to anybody. Well, and you guys can hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm not by my phone right now. My dog was having an anxiety attack. Um, I read through the article and the guy didn't have any fucking valid points. Like he had nothing to really say why we need less. At the end, all he said was, fuck, I'm out of shape running up and down my stairs, breathing heavy. Um, all he said was, maybe we should binge watch or binge read a book. It's like, go oh, fuck yourself, bud, just because he wrote a book. So he wants people to binge read it. Like, <laughs> he's just trying to get clicks. Um, so, but I agree. It's, uh, we need sports. It brings people together. It, uh, what do we want to talk about? The weather and politics? That's going to drive the world fucking mad. No. So he's an idiot. Discredited. Uh, butthole disapproves. That does not get the butthole stamp of approval. Yeah, even the people talk about fucking weather aren't right half the time. I'm, I'm like daily updating with my dad, who's like my professional weather guy. He watches the news like no one else. And oh, we're going to have rain Monday night. Monday night comes around, there's not a fucking rain cloud in the sky, and I give him shit. He goes, oh, my weather guys told me wrong stuff. It's not my fault. I'm like, fuck your weather guys. Just stick your head out the window in the morning and take your best guess. That's way better than the weather guys. Yeah. Fun to do with what we're talking about right now. Yeah. We need sports. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk the weather guys. But sports or the weather. Do you guys think it's going to be weird watching football without sound? Would you rather than pound in just to make it more normal, or would that be weirder? I think it'd be I feel like they could do something. Like that video of Cam Newton calling out uh, Clay Matthews. Packers, you can hear them. Yeah. yeah, I'd love to be able to hear the quarterback yelling. And but for every clip like that, how many f bombs and stuff are they're just going to be bleeping it? It's going to be like a rap. uncensor it, baby. Make a pay per view. I'd fucking pay for that shit. We're not supposed to be able to hear what those players are saying to each other because 90% of the time I would love to hear it, but I can imagine ABC and Fox and NBC and CBS watching to hear it. I think it'd be good. I I disagree. I think it'd be weird. It, I, I don't know. Like, There's something about hearing the, the guys in the background and you know all the fans yelling that kind of gives a different feel to it. You know, like, would you enjoy watching a one-on-one pickup or five-on-five pickup basketball game at the gym? They're just hollering at each other. Like, that's not nearly as fun as if you hear people cheering and jeering. Dude. I just had the UFC event over this past weekend without fans. And even that was weird. And that's not nearly as loud as an NFL stadium is. But to have no fans while they're fighting, then all you can hear is the announcer and the punches bizarre and even greg hardy said it helped him to win the fight actually though because he could hear the announcer and he got tips from him changed the way he was fighting because he heard the announcer talking shit on him so changed okay. up everything he goes thank you appreciate there being no fans well, here that and copious amounts of cocaine <laughs> yeah he practiced on his girl i'm pretty sure have you before the good sport stuff? Did you guys watch any Twins games on baseball or on TV? Uh, like last season? Yeah, sure. I almost went to one. <laughs> if you watch really? a Twins game on the TV, it's almost like there's no fans because they it's don't know. Quiet what the fuck game as it is. You can yeah. 
pipe in sounds. They pipe in like birds and stuff like that. So it's not <laughs> so quiet. The golf is quiet. That's why it would be weird watching golf with no sound. I think it's going to be weird watching football with no sound. They could do something to get the fans involved, though. If you were to join, like, I, you could probably join some sort of, like, chat, you know, and then they could play it over the the loud screen, you know, like a compilation of all the people talking and, and cheering and whatever. But that or just pumping fake noise. And how badly is it going to take away from home field advantage? It's going to even the playing field quite a bit. It's not going to be the toughest places to play anymore. Kansas City's just Kansas City. Buffalo's just Buffalo. Like, it takes a lot away. Minnesota had a huge home field advantage from the crowd. The skull change yeah. in the fourth quarter? Is it not worth giving Some up games. that home field advantage, though, for football? Yeah. I mean, what are your guys' thoughts? Do you think there are going to be fans in the stands in the fall? No. Zero chance. Not this year. I think there will be a limited fashion. Me too. Watch them never allow it ever again. Okay, so – Fuck me. Okay, so uh, limited fashion, like just 10% dipped. capacity, 15, 20. I don't see why you don't just bring everybody in there. I honestly agree 100% with you. You're speaking truth, but – not everybody agrees with us, Brandon. Sorry. No. The great Brandino. You know. <laughs> I think if they allow it, that they'll be able to sell at regular face value for those tickets. I think there will be 60,000 people willing to go to that game in September. No. For sure. I, I don't think that there's going to be sold at face value. I think they're going to be cheaper. And I guess you might not sell out every event. But there's a lot of fucking people that would go. I mean, there's a lot of people that would go to games right now. Let it alone in four or five months. I don't like going to a Menards. I'd be weary of a game like that. Right yeah, now. I don't want to wear a mask, so I don't like going yeah, there either. Yeah, like I turned around when they said I needed a mask at Menards. Fuck that shit. Well, you didn't have a mask, so. They were yeah. selling them for a buck at the counter. I wasn't going to wait in line and then buy a fucking mask. To go shop at your store. That's bullshit. Haven't been to Costco. It's safe for you to wait in line, too, without one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's – no. Fuck I you. I don't know. I, I think that they should have fans back in. If people want to go, let them go in there. If you're nervous, I don't, don't. I don't think there's going to be a season if there's not people in the stands. It's what drives most of the money. Like, the NBA – they're talking about their revenue sharing and everything too. That's a big part of how the players make their money without fans in the stands and without them playing. Like I think it was Adam Silver is the, the guy of that, right? Uh, commissioner. The NBA. Yep. Yeah. yeah. He was saying um, that there's going to have to be some serious talks about the collective bargaining that they have, because right now the way things are going to be going, it's not going to be good for their league. So without fans, I mean, football's in the fall. Like, we're, we're going to have a couple more months to let things get back to normal and die out. And I think a lot of people are going to be off the – the, Yeah, exactly. Coming back around on it. I mean, yeah, the stats yeah. show some pretty dramatic stuff. The NFL's in-stadium revenue is only 15% of its total revenue, though. Oh, really? Because – well, I've, if you look at basketball or hockey where they have all they those don't. games, and then that's what college football too, it's like over 50% in the stadium. NFL has the best because almost every one of their games is nationally televised. Oh, sure. Their TV deals. They, are they have huge TV contracts, huge contracts for those people where the Twins play on Fox Sports North. The Wild play on Fox Sports North. They're not playing on NBC. Fox. Fox. We're not playing on the major networks. Scott, you should cut a hole in there so you could drink your beer still. You know, I would think about it, but I don't know. I kind of like how it is right now. <laughs> Pretty soon people are going to be born with them. <laughs> just going to come out with a mask on. I just want to make sure I can go into a Vikings game this fall, you guys. That's probably what it's going to be. They're going to require you to wear a mask or something, maybe some gloves. 
very minimal food options that you can have. So I heard a little conspiracy theory about the masks at Menards and Costco. I heard they were caught price gouging and as a punishment, they required that all their patrons and all their customers had to wear the mask now. Why, why is that a punishment for Costco? I, I think there's a lot of people like me that are, uh, I mean, I will, I will not walk into a store if I have to put on a mask. I'm going to bring my money somewhere else. And I did. But you won't go to Costco then? Nope. I haven't been in. I will not until that, policy is gone so once the policy is gone you're going to be okay with it yeah absolutely yeah that's fuck you can't fucking force someone to wear a mask to shop in your store that's fucking horseshit uh they technically can they're private business owners they can do what they want but then you get to decide and do what you want yeah yeah that's no. fair so yeah if the nfl is going to require masks i won't be going to a game this year but I hope they don't do that. Mask. What if they always require it? Moving forward, it's it's just a requirement now. I might get into college football. The safety of all. <laughs> college football might not even go on. According college to the NCAA, not, not if, being open in the fall. That the NCAA will not have games if there's no college in the fall. Is what they said. Yeah, it's a uh, <clears throat> time for sure. Well, I have a really simple See, solution to that. Just have fucking college in the fall. Yeah. If you guys had to choose between one, would you choose college football or NFL? NFL. NFL. But I want both. I want both. If there is no college football, do they have a draft next year? I was thinking that too. People can go into the draft with, you know, just their past tape. A Canadian football draft? NFL. The, no, or like years could have been eligible for this past draft. Wanted to go back for their senior year. They'll probably still finish their senior year of school. They're not going to not have school, but then they don't get that senior year eligibility. They'll have they a draft go back if they want to, but they might say, "Fuck it, I'm ready for the pros. I should have came out last year." There's no tape to compare me to the rest of the quarterbacks. Maybe I have a good chance. I'm going to enter the draft. I wonder if they'll have a draft of people uh, tapes all a year old. On. Yeah, imagine those college players who decided to go back to college for one more season instead of joining the draft this year. How big of a decision that was. Yeah. Holy shit. Do you guys hear what Harbaugh wants too? Which one? Uh, John. The Michigan coach? No, John's yeah, the he... Baltimore head coach. Jim is the Michigan head coach. That's what I meant, Jim. Yeah, they, similar close names, whatever they look like. Um. He was saying he believes that if a player doesn't get drafted, uh, if they declare for the draft and they don't get picked, that they should have the option to go back to school. What do you guys think about that? Great point. I completely agree with that. Yeah. I don't if they don't that. play football, they should. But if they play any sort of number of games, then they should not. That's what he's saying. They don't get drafted. Yeah, but yeah. That, all, that all has to be said with if they play zero games. Like if they don't have a season, then, yeah, I agree with him. But if they play some football games, then I don't think that they should be able to come back. They should lose their eligibility. But yeah, if they play in the NFL. No, if – what you're saying is if a college player declares and doesn't get drafted, they should be able to go back to college. That's what you're saying. Yeah. 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 What I'm saying is if college doesn't play any games this year, they should be able to go back and have another year of eligibility. But if college plays some games, they should forfeit that eligibility for the year. I think Brandon's speaking in more general terms, not just with this COVID going on. That, yeah. I think oh, was, okay. That's what I wasn't – okay. If a player enters the draft, goes undrafted, so that's a decision they make from January to April, goes undrafted, then they should be able to go back to school instead of signing as an undrafted free agent. I disagree with yep. that. I disagree with that. Left. You say no? Yeah. I mean, it's a big – you're kind of screwing your school over when you decide to leave. Most of the people quit school, prepare for the combine, and prepare for the draft. It's not like they're still going to classes. And then to go through all that and then say, oh, okay, I'm coming back. Give me my scholarship back. You might have to take it away from someone you already offered it to that was a walk-on or an incoming freshman. There'd be a lot of logistics things that you got to work out. I'd say if they could figure those out, I would be okay with it. 
think about it from a college's perspective. If you're a head coach of a school, you know usually who's leaving for the draft and you know which scholarships and which positions you need to fill out with the incoming class. So you recruit yeah. based on that. Now you go through and put all that work in on recruiting and the guy gets undrafted. So he decides he wants to come back and then you have to give him a scholarship. It, it, that's a lot of logistics. And I think you should have to, uh, the decision you make, you should have to live with whether you get drafted or not. It really only affects juniors because you can only go pro if you're a junior or a senior. In the exactly. NFL. Yeah. So it's just a small percentage of players who are possibly coming back and how many would take the option to go back to college versus try and sign with a team undrafted? Some might. Well, if you have the option to get signed undrafted, not all of them get that. Yeah. I, I bet the number of players who would go back to college are very, very small. And uh, I don't know, if I was the coach of a team, I'd rather take a senior who's like been in my program for three years versus a, a recruit. Then it's not necessarily that you have to give them the scholarship back. Maybe there's stipulations on it. Maybe they they don't have a scholarship anymore. They're allowed back. They can play on the team, but they got to pay for their own schooling for the next year. You know, but they can make certain stipulations. I, I don't see too big of a deal with it. They have to definitely have some rules set, though. I just think it opens up too big of a can of worms to even do it. That's what I think. Well, once college players start getting paid for fucking school, then it won't be an issue, you know? Then they probably might stay a little bit longer, you know. That's fair. Um. So as everybody here knows, the NFL schedule was released on Thursday. Um, the Patriots, I think it is, have the toughest schedule based on last year's records, and Baltimore Ravens have the easiest schedule based on the records last year. What I want to do is before we get into too deep on deep diving the schedule. Why don't we go through the Vikings and go wins, losses, down the board. I'll read off week one matchup all the way through week 17. You guys give me win or loss based on what you think will happen in that week. Uh, week one, we get Green Bay at home. Wins or Dub. losses. Start one word answers. Gage, you first. Dub. Win. 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 Okay. Week two at Indianapolis. Win. Win. Boss. Week three, Tennessee at home. Win. 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 I have, I have three wins. I'm not reading off for the listeners. I'm at three wins. Everybody's at three wins except Ty's at two. Week four at Houston, noon game. I, they're all noon unless I specify otherwise. Win or Win. loss at Houston. Win. Win. Loss. I actually have that as my first loss, too. Um, week five at Seattle, Sunday night football. Loss. First L. Loss. We all have losses for that game. <laughs> uh, we are historians. We don't win in Seattle. We are historians at the Or bubble. prime time games are pretty rough, too. All right. Week prime time six. In Seattle, yeah. Um, week six, home against Atlanta. Win. 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 Week seven is the Vikings' bye week, and week eight is at Green Bay. Loss. Loss. I'm taking a win here. Out of the bye week. You having a sweep, Green Bay? Yep. Okay. Six and one. Week Eight nine. Down. Week nine, home against Detroit. Win. Win. Uh, week 10 at Chicago, Monday night football. Loss. Loss. Star, what did you have there? Oh, uno momento, por favor. Star? Loss. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, week 11, Sunday at 3.30, Dallas Cowboys at home. Win. Shit. This I'm going to go win. Game. I think this is the closest game of the season, and it's going to be a dub. Win. Was Brandon going to step away for a second? Uh, what, was the, what was the team? 
Dallas Dallas at home. Dallas at home. Give me a W. Week 12, the Carolina Panthers at at home. Win. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. Teddy B comes into town and whoops on us. I have us as a win. Week 13, Jacksonville at home. Win. Win. Trip through these quick. I have to drive a car, and I think I might lose my service. So, Okay. Week 14. Um, when, week 14 at Tampa Bay. Lost. Does everybody have that as a loss? Star? Lost. Week 15, Chicago at home, noon. Win. Win. W. Week 16 at New Orleans, 330. Loss. Yeah. Loss. Week 17 at Detroit. Win. Loss. I'm saying we go 13-3 with a loss there. We're on backup. That's your I think I'm 11 and 5. That's my fourth up? Yes. Well, it's still, okay. they're playing back. Uh, Brandon's still, oh, he's still here. Good. Okay. So we have Gage has the Minnesota Vikings going uh, 13. Or wait, sorry, 12 and 4. Ty Sweet. has him going. Star, you dog, you. 8 and 8. All right. Scott has him going eleven and five. Brandon has him going eleven and five. Also, is that what we predicted last week? We didn't do predictions last week based on the homes and aways because that was released Thursday. Oh yeah, that's right. That was just released. Um, sweet. I feel like overall the the schedule for the Vikings is a pretty. It's a pretty. It's pretty tough. You play a lot of good quarterbacks. The first eight weeks is going to make or break this team. Yeah, if they go 7-1 and one like I predicted, I think they have a really good uh, run of it. But they it's can gonna, drop a few of those games. It's going to be a lot of stress on a young secondary, which is – we'll see. Especially week one against Rodgers and Green Bay. I think – Indy is going to be the surprise loss. I think Indy is a contender. I do, too. I think that will be a surprise loss. I think we'll struggle against Deshaun Watson. I think the Cowboys are going to be the surprise win because I think they're actually going to be pretty good. But we play well against the Cowboys. I don't think we've ever beat Tom Brady. You guys can go back and look that up. But I'm pretty sure he's had a number. Yep. So I don't know if it's going to start now. And we beat the Saints the last two times, or just one. I feel like we've been going back and forth with them, and it's their turn. I don't think we've been going back and forth. I think since the uh, Minneapolis miracle, we've kind of had their number. No, they beat us at home on Sunday night football, or was it Monday night football? Yeah, Kirk threw that pick six. Thursday night football it was. In the season? Uh, Kirk's first season. Two years ago? Yeah. I do not remember that one. But maybe we can pull a couple extra ones out. I think the Vikings are going to be a team that has a strong second half of this season because the young players will get caught up to speed and the second half of our schedule is quite a bit lighter. So I think we'll have a strong second half and we'll kind of come out a little bit slow out of the gate. Hopefully not too slow, though. Yeah. We'll see. I I hope so, especially with the extra slot for the playoffs. Maybe we can sneak in. But Zimmer's been like every other year for his career here. Yep. So this should be a down year. Based on his history. Yeah. Um, overall, does anybody have any other thoughts overall on the uh, – on the NFL schedule, I mean, you have um, Washington has no primetime games. Tampa Bay's got, I think, five primetime games or not noon games. Um, I read that the 
Tampa Bay and the Patriots only have two games that overlap. Yeah, so they're going to be able to watch each other. Huh? Yeah, just be so to... that Patriots fans could watch Tom Brady. Yep, yep. They said that was just coincidence. And then how about the Vikings, Saints on Christmas Day? Do you believe Day? that? They don't do that. When was the last time we got a Christmas Day football game? Never. It's never happened. Yeah, yeah I don't think it's ever happened. Reserved for NBA, I thought. So that's kind of cool. Get a midday football game on Christmas. Mm-hmm. I'm a fan of that. I think it's going to be a little Christmas present for us Vikings fans. Yeah. Uh, it, it, whatever it is, it's a, if it's a win or a loss, it's New Orleans and Minnesota. It's going to be a hell of a good football game. I'm excited for it. It's going to make my whole Christmas day a little edgy. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm not it's going to be probably my least enjoyable Christmas day of all of my Christmas days because the Vikings play on it up until the game's finished. If we win, it'll be good, but it's still going to be stressful. So boys, a part further review. Uh I don't know which year it was that the Saints beat us, but it wasn't it wasn't in 2017. It, it was 2018, you're it saying? It was the 17 18 season. Not last year, but the year before. Yeah, so our season started with the Saints. We beat them 29 to 9 on 9 11. No, that, that was the year that, that, that was that's Bradford and Keenum season. Yeah. 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 That was the same year as the Minneapolis Miracle. Yep. So you're saying the 2019 season? 2018. It would have been the 18-19 season, maybe. Yeah, the 18-19 season. I remember it was close. And then it was oh, close. Jesus. We just muted Brandon. I was at the game. I know we lost to them because I was at that game. Google's not letting me pull it up, man. I got it. Through pick six to Patrick Robinson. Yep. Right there end of the first half and it was downhill from there. Yep. Sorry about that guy. My dog got caught in the car. Are you okay, Brandon? I'm okay. Welfare check? You Your dog got dog what? Dog. Caught in the car? Yeah, she got caught in an awkward spot and she was yelping. Not like closed door or anything like that. She just, when she gets uncomfortable, she freaks out. I didn't drive down the street to pick her up. Welcome back. Is there anything on the uh, schedule that sticks out to you? The entire uh, Chiefs Texans. That can be a fun one. Always is. What about yeah. Texans and Bucks? The Texans and Bucks? I think they got a game. Uh, I don't know. That one's going to be okay, too. I think the season opens up with the uh, Bucks and Saints, right? It's not the opener opener, I don't think. What's the opener opener? Opener opener is Texans Chiefs. Well, that's week three. I thought I'm pretty sure that's week three. No, I'm pretty sure that that's the opening game of the season. Yeah, Texans Chiefs nine ten at seven twenty. That's the first game of the year. Oh, okay. Well, that's the one I'm looking forward to then. The most. I think the six and bucks is going to be a fun one to open up week one with. Um, I did hear that the Colts, they have something where in the last 27 primetime games, they've only had like seven of them at home, which is the worst percentage in the NFL. And so the, the owner is getting a little upset about that. And they kind of get the shaft on where they're playing. Similar to Vikings playing at Seahawks every year. Um. Oh my God! Week two, Thursday night game. Week two is Cincinnati at Cleveland. That's gonna be a good Thursday night game. Burrow in week two. You gonna see a couple new stadiums? That'll be fun. Um. Also, assuming all rookie starts uh, between Herbert, Tua, and Burrow, um, they're all gonna play each other this year. I don't think the the plan is for Herbert to start as of yet, is it? I don't either, but by the time he would play them, it would be later in the season, so it's a higher likely likelihood that he would. 
I think Burrow and Tua. I don't know about Tua. I don't think Tua is going to start right away either. I think they're going to go with Fitzpatrick, but he's capable of having a disaster game early on. And if I think Fitzmagic has one really bad game, they'll go to Tua. Dang, boys, looking at the uh, sports news, the MLB has the owners just accepted a proposal to bring baseball back to home stadiums in July. Yep. I think if baseball starts bringing back home games, it's going to be a good see a, a good uh, ball rolling effect for the NFL season. Baseball does though have it designed up so it'll be no fans, and I think it'll be eighty-two games, an eighty-two game season. Season. Yep. Um. So looking at. Yeah, other than that, I think Baltimore's season sets up really good. They have a nice schedule. I think Baltimore is going to be the best the best record in the AFC. Other than that, I mean, this it's a schedule release. I don't usually get too into that, but it's fun to look at your team's schedule specifically. So that's why I kind of thought we'd deep dive the Vikings. Um, Star, you have a what if, which is a new segment that you're going to be bringing to the butthole. Explain yeah, so it. There's- in the history of the NFL, there's some big moments. There's the helmet catch. There's the Malcolm Butler interception at the end. Of just game-changing, potentially error-changing type of plays. What happened? So I wanted to come up with something a week where we take a moment that happened and we change it. And we talk about what happened because of that change. The moment this week is the 2012 NFL draft. With the number one pick, the Indianapolis Colts selected Andrew Luck. At the time, it was looked at as surefire. This guy is the next Peyton man, and we're replacing him with his clone. We're going to be set for life. A couple of rounds later in that draft, the Seahawks selected a quarterback out of Wisconsin named Russell Wilson. Wilson has been to two Super Bowls with the Seahawks. He's won one of them. My what if is, knowing what we know now, and the Colts select Russell Wilson, number one overall, where does that team stand today? Does Russell have the same type of success with them? Does India have a Super Bowl, or does it completely change everything? What do you guys think? I'll go first here. I personally think it completely changes everything. I think if Russell had the offensive line the Indianapolis Colts developed there, uh he didn't have to be the gamer that he was in Seattle. And his talent may have gotten to the same level it is now, but I don't think it would have been a sure thing. I think there's part of him that's uh, the athleticism, the underdog mentality, the 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 on-the-move kind of running around, saving his own ass aspect of him makes him the gamer that he is. So I, I don't think he has the same career or uh, bring the team to the Super Bowl that he did with Seattle. Um, had that great of an offensive line back in the day, though. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was bad, but I don't think it was like top end where Wilson wasn't going to have to move around. Luck. He got hit a lot. Yeah. But, you know, is that just on my computer? It was pretty choppy there, Brandon. Yeah, oh, you're super choppy. I was just saying that. Um, I don't think the Colts had that great of an offensive line back in the day. I think it's a lot better now than it used to be. I think Luck got hit a lot. Yeah, I was actually going to piggyback off of that too and That's say that year. I would have. I would say that I think Russell Wilson would mask that bad Colts offensive line just like he's done for Seattle. But I also think that Russell Wilson with that Colts roster, I don't think he was ever getting past. Uh, Peyton Manning with Denver or Tom Brady with New England. That Colts roster, he got drafted to Seattle, but a really good roster. Yeah, the Legion of Boom was pretty epic. Yeah. yeah. And we're talking no Marshawn, no Legion of Boom. But He's playing with Trent Legion Richardson in and... those games. What's the furthest Indianapolis made it with Andrew Luck? Divisional round? No, I think they made it to a title game. Did they? Let's see. He made they the had the huge off. comeback against Kansas City. But Brandon, your mic is like cutting in and out. He gone. 
Hey, Gown. So, was that uh, was it doing that for you guys? Like cutting in and out? Yeah, it was super choppy. Yeah, I think everyone kind of had the same point that they don't think that he would have brought in the a Super Bowl. No. I don't think he would have either, but I think Indianapolis would have, as a whole, had more success with Russell Wilson than Andrew Luck. But I don't think they ever would have gotten out of that side of the bracket. So it was 2014-15 uh, season that Andrew Luck went to the um, uh, AFC Championship game and then played t- uh, New England. Yeah, you got to wonder. I'm trying to think of even – top defensive players on the Colts throughout those years, and I can't think of big names. They haven't had a lot. No. I mean, Dwight Freeney? He was coming towards the end of his career already. Yeah. Mathis and Freeney would have both been there right away. Yeah. I think he would have had more help as far as wide receivers go. But having Marshawn Lynch and a stellar defense might have propelled them to those two Super Bowls. With Seattle. I completely agree. All right, well, that does it. Stay tuned next week for another game changing moment. I kind of like that what ifs. That's a fun little bit there, Star. I like that. Just because you kind of take a look from a different perspective, you know? Yeah. Um, so I have. Brandon. Brandon, are you back or what? Because now you're just muff. Now you're all messed up. <laughs> I have a what if uh, or an ABC game, group A, group B, group C. You guys remember playing these games? I do. I do. I have to pull up the tweet pretty quick. I'll unmute Brandon here in a second. I'm just giving him some time to get his mic set up. Um, Brandon, give the thumbs up when you're ready. I got to find it here. I should I should have just saved it, but we've been hot on the trail of the there. We'll pull on mute, Brandon. Doing better there, Brandon? No, it's all good. Now. I hope so. Um I'm trying to pull up that ABC tweet that I was gonna read off for all of us to pick group A, group B, group C. Did we finish what if? I know I was kind of in and out there. We did. If you have anything else you want to add regarding that Russell Wilson Andrew Luck mashup, I'll say it. I it. I mean, I think it changes a lot because I don't think Luck goes. I don't think Luck goes to the the Seahawks instead. I mean, that changes the obviously the whole draft and where everything goes. But just Wilson alone going to the Colts? No, I don't think that he does nearly as well as he does with Seattle. But. Yeah, think about it. Redskins took RG3. Then does Luck go to? Does RG3 go uh, to the Browns? Like, I mean, it, it changes everything. It does, uh, yeah. Luck would for sure have been the two pick if Russell Wilson would have gone first. Yeah. Um. So I got my Group A, Group B, Group C bit. Um, and it's a good one this week. It's one quarterback, one running back, and one wide receiver in each group. Obviously, I'll read off the three options. You guys will tell me which group you would take. Group A includes quarterback Kyler Murray, running back Nick Chubb, and wide receiver Keenan Allen. This is not fantasy related. This is if you're starting a team, which group do you want? Group B would include quarterback Lamar Jackson, running back Austin Eckler, wide receiver Adam Thielen. Group C would include quarterback Russell Wilson, running back Dalvin Cook, wide receiver Jerry Judy. Which group are you guys taking? Star? Uh, can you Brandon. repeat team one? Yep. Group A would be quarterback Kyler Murray, running back Nick Chubb, wide receiver Keenan Allen. And I'll share my screen so you guys can see really quick. Mm. Can you even read that? No. no. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> I'm going I'm... with group A. No, Star, let's hear your points. I think I'm going three. Even though Judy's unproven, and that was the hardest thing. I was leaning to, but I think between Wilson and Cook, just the dynamicness of both of them, throwing a guy like Judy, who was considered a top-ten prospect. I know he didn't go there, but he easily could have. 
I think those three in three years from now, we'll look back and say those are the best three at each of their individual positions. Damn. Uh, I'm going group A because I like a rookie contract on my quarterback. Gives me a lot of flexibility to make other moves like building a stout defense, which is where I'd like to go personally as a coach. And uh, Keenan Allen and Chubb was my running back. I mean, you got a true ground and pound running back. You can hand it off 30 times a game. Take the pressure off the young quarterback, and hopefully he can find his best receiver there and he can stay healthy. This is a tough one. Personally, I think I almost lean group B just because if you're starting a franchise, Lamar Jackson, I think is the quarterback that you want to start it with. Obviously the most athletic and if he can keep it going, you know, if he, he can have a, a long-term career, I, those other two. Well, yeah, also in a rookie contract, but outside of that, um, I mean, you think about it, if you're starting a franchise with them, Eckler and Thielen, if they don't pan out, you can find somebody else, but you're going to get another Lamar Jackson. So I think I'm going to go with that route. Thielen's still decent if he comes back off that injury. And Eckler, I mean, he played solid in that number one spot. So that, give me group B. They're all enticing, but I like Lamar Jackson the most out of all the QBs, going long term, that is. Yeah. Um, me personally, I think I would take group C with Star just because I kind of agree with him on his point of having Dalvin and Russell Wilson is a lot of dynamic players and not that all of the I mean either any of these three groups would be good I just like group C a little bit better because of Dalvin and Russell Wilson and I think Jerry Judy is the most unproven player of all of them all but I also think he has uh, upside to be just as good if not better than both Thielen and Keenan Allen and he doesn't have the injury history that they both have what does the rest of the team look like with Russell Wilson's contract and Dalvin Cook potentially getting a top five running back contract Within the next well, year. that's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, it would, I mean, you'd, I don't, th I think of those three squads, that team's rest of its roster would be the weakest. You look Just at the Russell Saints. Wilson alone. Saints have paid their quarterback, running back, and wide receiver. Their defense is fine. Their offensive but, line. No. Uh, Brees is always took 25 million versus 35, 40. Saving yeah. money but not paying Michael Thomas and paying Jerry Judy. Yeah. True. Um, well, that's fun. I always like those ABCs. They're fun. Um, Brandon, you got something you want to debut? Yeah. So I'm going to roll a new game. It's going to be at the end of every podcast. Um, we're going to call it, I don't know, maybe the butthole five or just five. Um, the way it works is give you a category. And you have 30 seconds to name five answers in that category. So it's the top five or the right five answers. So let's give an example. Um, if it was quarterbacks who threw the least amount of interceptions in 2019, um, starting a full season, you would have 30 seconds to answer as many as you can. If you answer all of them correctly and there's a tie, you go to the next five with another 20 seconds. Um, whoever gets the most points wins the game. Is there any particular order we have to have them in? No order. Uh, if you, you can just name any in the top five. Because some of these are going to be very specific. Some of them are going to be kind of broad. Like, it, it'll it vary. So, the order is not necessary. 30 seconds. Right. All right. At the top five. Yeah, 30, 30 seconds is kind of a long time for it, but we're going to see how it goes. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right. So, after I read the question, I'm going to start the timer. Write your answers down. Uh, after the 30 seconds, we'll reveal them, and we'll, we'll see who wins. All right, give me the top five fantasy running backs in full point PPR in 2019 from last season. Time started? Time started as soon as I read the question. We're halfway there. Five seconds, four, three, two, one, pencils down. I have five. It's a late pen, late pen drop, but we'll allow it. All right, we'll read Scott's first. Okay. Uh, you want to read your list? Yep, I'll read my list first. I have Eckler, Cook, 
McCaffrey, Chubb, Zeke. Okay. I Star? have the exact same list. I have McCaffrey, Eckler, Cook, Chubb, and then I have Henry. Okay. And Gage. I have that exact same list. Uh Minus just a lot of names. I have C Mac and Cook. Is that all you got in thirty seconds? <laughs> yeah, that's all I got, Don. I love it. Okay. Uh correct answer. Star got four. Scott got three. Gage got one. It is C Mac, Aaron Jones, Zeke, Eckler, and Henry. Cook rounded out number six. Fournette oh. was seven. Chubb was eight. Kamara, nine. And Barkley was ten. That was a good two one. A- two answers. Yeah, I was stuck on Gurley, but I knew he didn't play, so I really wasn't <laughs> stuck on Gurley. All That's right. a good bet. Um, I like that bit. I'll tell you right now, I don't think I'm going to have a full list with 30 seconds. That's a tough one. <laughs> You definitely wouldn't get it on this next one. Six, I, had, uh, I had item. another game. Six seconds an item. That seems about right. I mean, all right, give me give me the top five teams from the NFC from last year. Go. Uh, the Saints, the Packers. Uh, 49ers. You have 10 seconds left. Fuck. (laughs) Uh, Yep. We got three. Yeah, it was three for three. I'm going to come up with good names, but... Hey, at the end of it, you just got to wing it, man. You don't get any negative points for getting wrong. Yeah, true. But. but the thinking's so, hard, Gage. I get it. The what? The thinking's hard. I get it. It's tough thinking's when you're on hard. Spot. Thinking's hard. I'm not that guy. Hey, guy. Gage, if you have any game ideas, you know, workshop one and bring it to us next week. Be the host, and, and you can make your own rules. <laughs> Oh, shot across the bow. You have no good game. You don't come up with stipulations. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> Fair point. Uh, shit, boys. That's all I have for this episode. The NFL is going to get light coming up here, so we're going to lean heavily on the bits, which everybody loves anyway, so it doesn't even matter. We're fine. We're all fine. It's going to be fine. They don't want to okay. talk about football. Okay. They want to okay. talk about the about we should what? do some like motivational podcasts, like um, uh, you know, like like Gary Vee. Well, you know, like uh, I was gonna get off my couch to go grab the remote that was at, that was five feet away from me over on the end table, but then I remembered I had a universal remote on my phone, so I just opened up that app and changed the channel. Didn't have to move. Hashtag motivation. Hey, <laughs> Hashtag life hack. You know, like real motivation. Not this bullshit go work out twice a day motivation. The real motivation. The shit that really moves the needle. What, you don't want to – it's tough to get up and go to the bathroom to take a piss? Well, guess what? Just piss your pants. Life hack. That segment is brought to you by Butthole Adult Diapers. (laughs) I I had a family member um, right up. Who he he wore adult diapers for a little bit. Lucky. What was that? Uh, well, he's in his early thirties now, and this was like four years ago. So he's like twenty six. Shit his pants on the way up to the cabin. You know, knowing it, him is the way I know him. I'm not surprised. And he didn't know about it until we got up to the cabin. Somebody else pointed it out. So I don't know if that's bad for him or bad for everybody in the car. Gage, you were there. What? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It was the Long Island night, dude. Oh, Physically. okay. Physically, I don't blame him. Yeah, my, my spirit was no longer with us. 
I think all, he shit himself when we got to the Long Island bar. The and best then we part, went another hour and a half. Uh, yeah, the that best was part that was, about that night was fucking. We get to the uh, we get to the bar <coughs> and we all go up to the bar and we're drinking shots and eating turkey gizzards and just getting fucked up. And Gage is out back by all the smokers just puking in the bushes. And all the smokers was all like two people back there. That was yeah. not a very busy bar. This well, it's not a busy yeah. bar at all. No, it wasn't. But it was fun. Um, we got yelled at pretty good that night, though, by the the bar owner. There's no fucking puking in my bar. It's like, don't worry, he'll probably make it outside. Yes. Yeah, what is rum shot and fireball put together? What's that shot called? Devil like devil semen. something. Devil semen. That's what did you in? Was in the Long Islands. I had that. Pretty sure. Oh my goodness! Well, yeah. we requested semen, and we said, "Well, we might as well make it a shot." So let's do devil semen. That sounds good. Yeah, that was a long night. That was uh, there's a lot of Long Islands that night. I think it's also called cinnamon toast crunch, but devil semen is what the, the kids call it. Yeah, it's a technical term. Would, would you put rum chata in your cinnamon toast crunch cereal instead of milk? No. 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 <laughs> no. Breakfast oh. of champions. Oh, milk and cinnamon toast crunch is one of the best things that God ever created. It's like a double, though. Two for one. All right. Well, that's it for this podcast, gang. That's all I got. I got nothing else. I'm right there with you. Same. You guys have a very blessed night. And don't forget, preventing cancer is a big deal. Jerk off. And that's how, it's it. that's how you prevent cancer, right there. Do it.